In the mid 1960s when you thought of Boeing, you would think of big multi-engine planes. So when the twin engine 737 was announced in 1965, many people joked at the aircraft, which quickly earned the nickname of Baby Boeing. Now in 1967 when the 737 was released, it was the logical next new aircraft to complement Boeing's existing 707s and 727s. However, the 737 was facing steep competition from both the Douglas DC-9 and the BAC-111. In order to save production time and to begin delivering the aircraft as soon as possible, Boeing gave the 737 the same upper fuselage as the 707 and the 727, meaning that the same cargo pallets could be used for all three jets. The 737 had six abreast seating, which immediately gave an advantage over the DC-9's five abreast fuselage meaning it could carry more passengers. But something that really set the 737 apart from other aircraft was the engine placement. Most of the aircraft had two engines at the back of the fuselage. This led to less cabin space, more vibrations and a lot of noise. By placing them under the wings, vibrations were decreased and it gave a better passenger experience. Now on the next generation 737 aircraft, you can see the engines are flat bottomed. This enables the aircraft to be lower to the ground, allowing easier and cheaper ground operations at small regional airports, where the 737 was intended to operate. It also means stairs can be used, less advanced baggage loading systems, and everything just became easier to handle. This meant that the aircraft could operate in underdeveloped areas like Africa, South America and Asia, resulting in orders from these continents. Now on December the 28th, 1967, Lufthansa took delivery of their first 737-100 at a ceremony at the Boeing Field. The following day, United Airlines took delivery of their first 737-200. Now just 20 years after its release, the 737 had become the most sold plane in commercial history. By January 1991, 2,887 planes were on order and the 300, 400 and 500 versions were in production. Two years later, another 200 aircraft had been ordered. However, competition from the Airbus A320 series was beginning to affect the 737 program. So in 1993, Boeing began to develop the next generation aircraft, which was the 737-600, 700, 800 and 900 models. The wings were completely redesigned with a new aerofoil section an increased wingspan of 4.9 meters and 25% more surface area, allowing up to 30% more fuel to be stored in the wings. Now with a range of 900 miles greater than the classic 737 series, the next generation planes could operate transatlantic routes. Now the newest models of the 737 series are the MAX models. These models include the MAX 7, the MAX 8 and the MAX 9 and also the lesser known 737 MAX 200 which is based on the MAX 8. Ryanair has ordered 100 of the MAX 200 aircraft and the 200 was developed in response to the fast growing low cost sector of the aviation industry. Now the MAX 200 will have 11 additional seats and 5% lower operating cost than the MAX 8, driving growth in the budget airlines. Now in July 2012, the 737 became the first commercial jet aircraft to pass 10,000 orders. Consequently, by 2014, Boeing also increased the production to 42 aircraft per month, and it will also increase it again to 52 aircraft later this year if it all goes well. Now today, the first ever 737, which never actually went into service and was used only for flight testing, is now resting at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, alongside its older brothers in the 7 series. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Boeing History Timeline videos. If you want to learn more about the 737 and its history, then head over to Avgeek. Remember to subscribe for the next episode of the Boeing History Timeline videos, the infamous and the mighty Boeing 747.